So in this um, section, I'm going to really briefly introduce a tool that we can use with some of these um, binaries that we analyzed before. So in particular, we're going to look at cases where we have executable, um, and we're going to concentrate on executables that are used in some of these embedded systems, um, although this is applicable to you know much more than um, just the embedded systems that we're looking at. So the tool we're interested in is something called Ghidra, which was uh, released by the National Security Agency actually as an open source tool um, and is has quickly become quite popular um, for this type of work. Um, and basically what you have here, this is an example of um, opening something in it and it has two sides to it. So the whole idea of these tools is they serve um, for reverse engineering when you have an executable that that's kind of all you have. So you need to understand the flow, you need to understand what it's doing just from that. So over here we have, you know, before we were looking at assembly code generated by a C compiler. So this is assembly code generated from our binary. Um, and it's actually converting it. So one of the nice things about this is it has something called a decompiler, which is basically like taking that assembly and making usable C code out of it. And I say usable very, um, it doesn't mean it's readable or understandable to a human, just that it should um, perform the same operations. Um, so it can be a little easier to see program flow in the decompiler than in raw assembly, especially if you're just getting started. Um, so installing Ghidra, so there's some details in the lab one, so there's some slides on that. Um, there, there's actually quite a few resources, so the nice thing about it, there's a number of resources. I'm not going to go over all of the... Um, the, the details of it, um, it's more than I could cover in this course. But what I really want to get is get you to the point that you're using a little bit and starting to, um, you know, starting to load files in it to give you a really good starting point. Um, so it runs on Windows, Mac, or Linux. If you're running on Windows, I have a kind of super convenient thing for you right here. Um, and basically, there's a zip file that has the Java runtime installed in it. Um, and there's going to be lab number one instructions, so the, the PowerPoint file is uploaded now, and there'll be a little video after. Um, show you how to do that install in more detail. Um, so this will allow us to do inspection of um, executables, right? So remember we talked about binaries, and we said binaries could be executable or other um, things. Um, you know, it, does, it doesn't necessarily directly be uh, an executable file, but if it's an executable binary, we can analyze it in Ghidra. Um, and there's, there's many tools um, for analysis of uh, these programs, so there's lots of like, plugins and stuff we can do on top of this. Um, a few good resources, so there, there's actually a number of resources out there, and we'll bring some more in in the lab. Um, there is a Hackaday course that goes through some of the stuff on Ghidra, um, there's this overview course here you can link to. Um, there's actually a book on Ghidra as well. Um, and there's quite a few nice online YouTube and, and resources like that. So there is quite a few resources out there. Um, really briefly, sort of Ghidra 101, uh, what you need to do is we need to tell Ghidra the language that it expects. So this is like the processor type. So if we have an ARM Cortex-M, we need to tell it that it's an ARM Cortex-M device. Um, Ghidra needs to understand how it's converting the... Um, binary, you know, to assembly code. So part of it is the processor. Um, you may also have to tell it about the code format it's expecting, little or big endian. Um, most Cortex-M devices we're dealing with are little endian, uh, but technically some of these different processors could support both, so it's like an option to, to insert that. Um, the other trick is that Ghidra will need to know a starting address, so this is sort of some some basic stuff is it needs to understand what address the program's loaded to in memory. Um, in lab one, we're going to use the file type that includes that starting address. So if you remember when I looked at different file types, um, binary files didn't necessarily contain the starting address. Intel Hex did have at least address information. Um, so we're going to simplify things just the smallest amount with that. Um, once you load a file in Ghidra, you basically perform an auto analysis, which hopefully identifies instructions like this. So you can see, you know, when we looked at that um, ARM assembly code, we had like load instructions, compare instructions, um, move instructions, things like that, right? And we have our branch instructions, so we're branching to a function. Um, although now we don't have any sort of understandable name because 
the the assembly code has no idea what you called your functions, right? So it just gives it a function name based on the address it's jumping to. Um, the decompiler is similar, right? So the decompiler gives you structure that maybe makes sense, but of course everything's just called like variable one, variable seven, variable seven. Um, it's it has no idea what your your names were. Um, but as I said, it, it does make it a little easier to, to kind of understand, right? So if you want to look at like, you know, this is comparing if this is maybe a null pointer or something, and then if it is, it does all this other stuff. So it's a little easier to, to understand it um, in the code flow of C than it is to understand assembly. Um, if you haven't, especially if you haven't used assembly a lot. So, so I think you'll find this a lot easier to, to work with. Um, yeah, so as I've sort of stressed a few times, because you're going to run into this, you know, it's not nice C code. It's not human readable C code necessarily. Uh, it may have some stuff that the compiler has done. There may be optimizations that make the code a lot more complex to use. Um, the compiler also, you know, the, or the decompiler, sorry, it has no idea what function arguments um, are supposed to be called, right? So like everything else, you'll have to kind of understand what the arguments are. Um, it's making guesses about what the variable types are. These could be right or could be wrong. Um, sometimes like it, you'll see what happens is that um, even the number of arguments is, is incorrect that it thinks that are being passed. So the, compiler, the decompiler makes some stabs at what it thinks um, are gonna be the case, but it's not guaranteed to be right. Um, so yeah, so don't you, you can't trust it completely. Um, when we first open a program, okay, what do we do uh, when we first open it? One of the nice things to do is to look at strings. So there's this define strings that actually shows uh, strings that it knows are, are being used in the program. Um, and so if you open this, you will see, so in this binary file here, right, we've got a, a lot of nice stuff like uh, please enter password, password fail. Um, so these seem like, you know, things that are part of the, the user program, right? Like various uh, debug messages. Um, we also actually see some stuff that's like, you know, assertion failed. Um, we see malloc issues, right? So these are like part of some library that's been linked in. Um, so we may see tons and tons and tons of different strings loaded here. Um, when we're going through the file, we're going to be using this um, these cross references, which it, it'll call xref here, right? X for sort of cross. And this basically means we're going to look at a memory or look at a variable or look at a function and see where that function is called and where that function calls into or where that data is used. So as an example, if we look at this right here, this string, um, we have it's telling us there's a cross reference in this function um, to this string, right? So this is really interesting because we have a string, right? That's saying warning. So it's some initial initialization string. Like we probably see this printed out by the device. Um, and now we have a function that uses that. So if we were to double click on it in Ghidra, it's gonna jump to the function and we can actually see right, a reference to that string right there. And that string is getting loaded, or the, not the string itself, but a pointer to the string is getting loaded into R0. Um, and we know from before, you know, that's one of the ways that when we call functions, how arguments get passed to it. Um, we also see actually, uh, look at this, right? This this fun one, zero, one E 38 um, seems to be called a few times in a row, right? And each time there's a different string loaded. Um, so this suggests, hey, maybe that function is like a, a print function or something like that. Um, so this is kind of how we were, and we'll, we'll look at how we look at functions um, in the next lecture. But you know, you can sort of see through the cross references, it's a very powerful system. Um, other useful views are like the function graph. Um, so in this case, you can, you can see, and sorry, it's, it's small, you don't actually need to see what's happening here. But you can see there's all sorts of different, so it, it's going to different uh, sections of the code depending on some condition that's happening. So um, we can see loops, we can see you know if there's different code flow happening. Um, this is a good way to get a really high level view of it because often there might be one core you know, function that's doing a lot of stuff and it's calling out to all these different um, sub-functions. 
Um, so yeah, that's like, uh, you know, a really quick overview. Um, Ghidra is one of those things that uh, it, it's a lot easier once you get it in front of you. So the lab number one, we'll, we'll do a little bit of exploration of this. Um, there's lab number one setup instructions, right? And there's actually the file there. So you don't really need to worry too much about um, actually doing the lab itself yet. Those instructions aren't up if, if you're seeing this quickly. Um, what's important is to get it installed and get it running. So that's what um, the real and probably the hardest part will be for some people uh, because it, you'll need to get the Java runtime environment installed and stuff like that. Um, if you're doing this on Windows, please use the, the zip file I provide because it'll make it a lot easier for you. Um, once you get that up, it'll be a lot more interesting to explore this um, on your own and explore this as part of the lab to understand how Ghidra works when you're doing this reverse engineering.